at Pro Football Doc joins us next to get you ready. He's blocked well and tries to cut through the middle. Oh! Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. All right, everybody, welcome back to Kaplan and Crew with just the crew, Alex Padilla and John Browner with you guys here on a Tuesday. Uh, Scott said he was going to be on, and then now he's like not. He's in Phoenix, so whatever. It is what it is. But uh, this weekend is the Great France Fantasy Football Draft live at or from the Gaslamp Tavern at 2 p.m. in downtown San Diego. So if you're in town and you want to hang out, go check out Gaslamp Tavern, 2 p.m. Browner will be there. Scott will be there. The Great Friends will be there. The Great Friends Fantasy Football Draft is happening this Saturday, 2 o'clock. Gas Lamp Tavern to get you ready for your fantasy football draft, JB. I was like, who better? Who better than the Doc? Pro Football Doc joining us right now from Sports Injury Central. Doc, thank you so much for joining us. I thought of you because there's so many injuries already that have happened in the preseason. There's a lot of injuries happening, lingering from last season as we see all these reports of who's on the PUP and whatnot. So why not talk to the man that knows about all these injuries and you. How are you doing today, Doc? I'm, I'm doing great. Hey, look, I'd come to the Gaslam Tavern. I'm out of town this weekend, so not not going to be around. And taking my son actually to an Alabama football game before oh, nice. football season start, you know, NFL season starts. And before we get into injuries, yeah, well, is, Scott is too big time because now he's like Breeders Cup bound. Is is that why oh, he yeah. can't come on the show? I mean, you know, I, I got to beef know, with him though. I was at the track. I didn't get it. Did you guys get a hint to bet on his horse? I didn't. Dude, he that's... always says don't do it because he's you right. know scared of everything. I doc, listen. This guy is now going places and he don't want to be around no more. That's all it yeah. is. He's too he big time. Breeders he Cup, knows. and now he's like you know whatever. You know, we go we go national, right? We join Sports Grid, we join Sirius, and he takes the Jim Rome approach. He goes, "Why do I take so much vacation? Because I get so much vacation." Like all of a sudden, he doesn't want to work anymore. Just gone. <laughs> but Doc, can I That's ask you tough. something? I, can I ask you something real quick? Is, yeah. Is how old is your son? He's eleven. Has is there another child in this country that has been to more cool events than your son? Because you take him. <laughs> You've gone to Super Bowls. You've gone to like games, like the biggest games. This kid's been there, man. Well, you know, this is actually a, a consolation. He wanted to go to the Morgan Wallen concert 
my wife took his twin sister to the Morgan Wallen concert in, mm. in Vegas. And, uh, but, and she went with some of her friends, it was mother daughter. So Davis was odd man out. And so they said, well, you got to do something for him. And, and, you know, it, away yeah. we go. Why, uh, uh, for me. I've never been to an Alabama football game. So I was going to say, why Alabama is that? Cause you guys haven't been to Tus- Tuscaloosa before you guys. Check I've never out? been to Tuscaloosa. He's got a bestie that wants to go. And, um, you know, it's just, you know, and it's before the football season, it's their opener, you know, Western yeah. Kentucky and, but got invited to a nice, nice tailgate, but I didn't realize how formal they are in the South. I'm told that like, I have to wear long pants and at least a collared shirt. And an, we got Alabama golf shirts and that's lowbrow, no shorts, wow. no t-shirts. And they said, don't worry, you don't have to wear a jacket. Not everyone will. Cause it's hot. I'm like, <laughs> wait, a, wait, now a, he's wait, a, we're talking about the same Alabama. Well, I might have left out one detail. I, I, I have someone <laughs> who, who invited me, whatever. I said, what tailgate should we go to? Thinking, you know, beer in the parking lot kind of thing. Right. And he goes, oh, give me your names. I'll put you on this tailgate, the Walk of Champions. It's at the president's mansion. So maybe that's Ooh, why it's maybe. so. See, okay. That, see, see, see we that's known. some coastal we elite stuff, right? This is the doc, man. We should have known. No, no, no. We but I'm not wearing a sport coat. Come on. It's a football game. Golf shirt. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. See, I'm thinking you go into the parking lot somewhere. I'm like, wait, where Alabama? That's, you what going I was, to? Yeah. that's what I was trying to figure out. <laughs> you you know? wear a sport with coat like people, old, with the people, like right. your old Charger days on the field, man. Looking at sport coat all over again. But Doc, uh, let's get to it. Uh, let's get to it real quick. Um, I got to start start off with 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 the quarterbacks because there was a lot of big name quarterbacks, superstar quarterbacks that finished the season on the IR last year, season ending surgeries. Um, but to me, I think one of the most intriguing names out there, if you're thinking about drafting, because he's going so high, is Colts quarterback Anthony Richardson. Uh, me, me and Browner, mm-hmm. we we disagree. I think that he's a little too fragile for me, especially just because of the way he plays. What do you think as far as outlook of his shoulder and just lingering concerns because of his style of play? We don't have any concerns about his shoulder per se and the okay. surgery. I think the shoulder is going to be fine. And you may have heard me say this before. I, as a physician and former head team doctor, I think it's disrespectful to call players injury prone. Okay. To me, injury prone is player A takes a hit and is injured and player B takes the same hit and is not injured or the same thing happens. And if that's the case, then maybe you're injury prone. But the reality is there are very few injury prone players in the NFL. However, I do think based on his early returns and his success, Anthony Richardson and his style of play can put him more prone to injury. The amount that he runs around. Now it's wordsmithing, but there's a big difference between injury prone and prone to injury. Look, you're more prone to injury if you take double black diamond ski runs versus green or blue runs, right? That doesn't make you injury prone, but you are more prone to injury based on risk. And that's what we see with Anthony Richardson. Unless they change his style and what he does, the amount of running that he does, he's going to take more hits, and that's where the risk comes in. Double black diamond? Yeah, Doc, you went what? right. You went right over Browner's head on that what? one, dude. <laughs> what? Are you th- what, is, what is that? A, is that some kind of jury? We talking about like rings, begin, watches, beginner level, beginner level, and 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 not beginner level, Browner. Like, well, the, the the reason why I talk brought up skiing is, look, the kids uh, they're in sixth grade now, and I'm told by mom that they can't the wife that they can't miss school anymore so i'm in the midst of planning <laughs> the winter ski break vacation during their oh, holiday yeah. when prices are three times as expensive so that's where the ski analogy yeah. comes from okay that, that makes sense <laughs> hey so that we heard a lot about justin herbert being in a boot we heard a lot about how the plantar fasciitis is going to be affecting his throw his, his plant foot lingering where Right. Where are we now with this injury and the fact that this could be a lingering injury? What's the outlook on this? Plantar fasciitis indeed can linger, 
But what I said and what we said at Sports Injury Central, SICscore.com from the beginning is that there's no way he's missing games and he's not missing week one or any games. He will be able to play through sometimes with the pain killing injections, medication, orthotics, tape job. But the question is, how much does it linger and how much does the lack of practice time? Now, admittedly, he was there all off season. How much does the lack of practice time with young wide receivers and a new coordinator and slash and a new head coach and a new system? What, how does that affect them downstream? Look, back in the day, pa Philip Rivers had plantar fasciitis. It was never really reported and played through obviously everything he's had. But Rivers is not as mobile. We'll, we'll, we'll give mm -hmm. Herbert that uh, kind of thing. I think he's going to play and be fine. It's just, you know, newness in the system uh, and how much it lingers. Do you have a couple more minutes uh, to stick around sure. for another second? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Because we got about 60 seconds here, but I have a, a list of names. If you can keep this one short, though, because I'm not too worried about it, but Matthew Stafford missing practice time with a hamstring. Is that just Rams being super cautious with, with their prized possession? Well, well, we'll get to the Rams in a second, but here's a little bit of the promo. All of this for if you, any players, we have an 80-page all 32 team preseason injury preview at Sports Injury Central, SICscore.com. For, for the crew listeners, I won't even say Kaplan, just the crew listeners here, you can go to SICscore.com and download it for free by putting in your email and uh, get all these details and look it up by team by team. But I'm happy to stick around through the break and go over Stafford and anyone right, else. Let's, let's do it. This is a uh, us Kaplan and crew pro football doc, Dr. David Chow from sports injury central six score. S I C score.com is the website. Go check out that preseason. It's free. It's totally free. It's interactive. It gets updated daily. So you guys should definitely check that out before you do your fantasy football drafts this weekend. We'll get into Rams and a couple more injuries with the doc. When we come back in quick two minutes, doc, quick two minutes. We'll be right back. This is Kaplan and crew Kaplan. And And McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, we did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. All right, everybody, welcome back to Kaplan and crew. Thanks for sticking around over the break. This is Alex Padilla and John Brown are with you guys here on a Tuesday. Being joined right now from Sports Injury Central, sixscore.com is the website, sicscore.com, pro football doc, Dr. David Chow with us right now. Doc, we just uh, went before the break. I asked you about Matthew Stafford and if just the Rams are being a little overly cautious with his hamstring because he missed some practice time last week. What do you think about that one? 
I'm not so worried about his hamstring. Look, Matthew Stafford's a veteran. He's in the same system. Sean McVay traditionally doesn't play guys in preseason and is very protective. That's not the worry. But remember, season and a half ago, he had a neck issue, spinal cord issue, where he didn't finish the season. And my biggest questions about the Rams isn't Matthew Stafford's hamstring. It's will his neck and other things hold up, especially since their offensive line if you look at the preseason injury preview, is a little bit suspect with injuries and replacements. So that's the worry there. Not only that, but worries on the defensive, uh, the DBs for the Rams. So that's how granular we get in the preseason injury preview. Yeah, if you want that preseason injury guide, by the way, all you got to do is go to sixscore.com and add your uh, email. You'll get it completely for free. It's 80 pages, interactive, updates on all the injuries across the NFL. It's a very handy guide. You know how Scott Browner took that giant binder of stuff? Yeah. Going, Tommy, Tommy should have printed the injury guide for him as well. But anyways, go ahead, Browner. The, for me, I like to do little tricky things at the end of the draft when we talk about fantasy draft because we got one coming up, obviously, this Saturday. I'm a draft and stash guy for my last pick. And with the injuries to Jonathan Brooks out of Carolina, the running back, and Nick Chubb as well, these are the two people who I'm looking to draft and stash, as I like to say. Of those two, who do you think has the most potential to actually have a more successful season when they come off the pup list? Uh, Jonathan Brooks more than Nick Chubb. But in my draft, and I only do one, it did it already, they're never going to fall low enough to be in my favor. Nick Chubb dislocated his knee it was much more than a single ligament uh, our six score is like 31 in other words 31 percent of a normal nick chubb at best he's starting on pup that's not a surprise so is jonathan brooks jonathan brooks mm-hmm. will come off pup before nick chubb does if you're down to those two i'd take jonathan brooks but we've been fading jonathan brooks as well and here's why uh, at least his is just an ACL relatively isolated. Nick Chubb is a lot worse than that. And we hope he can make it back. If he weren't the fantastic Nick Chubb, I think he'd be out of the league. But he's so good, they're going to give him a chance. Jonathan Brooks is undoubtedly talented. But here's what we find. It's hard enough to do well your first year back from an ACL. Let's look at Saquon Barkley, his first year back. Not so good. Second year back, pretty good. This is his first year. He's starting on PUP, missing four games at least. It's asking a lot of Saquon Barkley to be good next year, stay at the same level coming off an ACL. And he did not have a great year. Jonathan Brooks is being asked to do that and jump a level of play from college to the NFL. So don't mm. love him either. So, But at some point, they, everyone becomes a bargain depending on the round of the draft. I mm-hmm. guess this next question is for everybody that has the number one overall pick. And there's not that many people out there, but it's important. CMC, thumbs up or thumbs down? Well, CMC better be thumbs up because I I have them in mind. I picked third, and I I had no draft oh, strategy in the Scott Fish Bowl. And well, the scoring in that one I think is more quarterback heavy. I mean, the way that they score, right? And but CMC was you know sort of the 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 pick uh, for me. Look, I, he played through the calf last year, missing only two games. Yes, calf injuries linger. Look, my bigger worry for the 49ers is not the CMC calf. And everyone knows about Brandon Ayuk and the contract and whatever. But it's actually Trent Williams. Trent yep. Williams is the one player that has the biggest effect on the 49ers downstream. The shuffle that they have, the way that they will have to keep George Kittle in if Trent Williams is not signed in there. And at this late date, if he signed will he be ready is the question that's the bigger worry for the 49ers as well as some defensive concerns Uh, you know their standout safety for years Hafunga is still not there yet and Dre Greenlaw coming off at the uh, Super Bowl Achilles that everybody saw is not ready yet Uh, they've got some defensive line issues as well Uh, 49ers start the season a little bit shorthanded against the Jets who by the way as we talked about before, Aaron Rodgers, completely, completely healthy. No issues. Well, how about Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow with that weird wrist injury. We all saw it on national television. We just couldn't throw a ball. Actually played preseason snaps this year for his first time ever. Like, So he's good to go. Yeah. 
that was an injury that we hadn't seen before in an NFL quarterback, and we cor correctly indicated it was a scapholunate ligament tear, unusual injury, but he had a repair. Look, we love Pat McAfee in his show and so forth, and I'm fortunate enough to go on on occasion. They had panned Joe Burrow because A.J. Hawk and Darius Leonard said, I had that injury. My wrist is stiff and doesn't move. But the difference was they had that injury, played through it all season, and then had a reconstruction and have some arthritic change over time. Joe Burrow ended his season to have a scapholunate ligament repair, and those results are different. I'm not worried about Joe Burrow. They did play him a little bit in the preseason. Why? Because it was unchartered waters. No one mm -hmm. in the NFL had had that before. And that broke the mold because, you know, Joe Burrow, these are his first ever preseason snaps. Right. First year, it was a holdout. Then it was COVID. There was an ACL recovery in there. Then there was the cap issue last year. The guys never played in the preseason except this year a tiny bit just to make sure the wrist is fine and the wrist is fine. And once again, it's not Joe Burrow's wrist. It's their right tackle and left tackle that we would be worried about in terms of health. All right, Doc. Well, we really appreciate the two segments you stuck around with us, getting us ready for our fantasy football draft. One more time, the preseason injury guide, sixscore.com, S-I-C-score.com. Just put your email and you'll get it absolutely for free. Right, Doc? Will do. And uh, just don't tell Scott. Let him draft with don't that. He Scott. missed out. Uh, he doesn't deserve it. He absolutely doesn't deserve it. We'll he talk didn't to tell you us about through. the horse, so let's not tell him about this. Oh, he told us not to. He told us right, not to not do to. it. Yeah, he told us don't do it because they were facing some other monster. Whatever, man. We some million yeah, we dollar are, horse. Yeah, we already had it out against them. So don't even he, he's X on our he's not friends with us right now, Doc. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. That was Pro Football Doc at Pro Football Doc S I C score dot com is the website. Browner, you feel more ready for your draft? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Saturday, two o'clock, Gas Lamp Tavern. Everybody, go check it out. When we come back, we're gonna make our prize picks. Uh, Scott sent me his card, so we don't really have to. We'll just do Scott's picks. How about that? Do a little shout-outs for you guys. Everybody sticking around here with us today on a Tuesday. Alex Padilla, John Browner, Kaplan and Crew. Be right back. I told y'all time and time again, Trey Murphy the third. Trey Murphy the third. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, this guy can absolutely ball as a 3 and D guy, and he's going to take the next step. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show, focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Hey, let's say it comes down for Matt Kuchar in the FedEx Cup ball. Let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot. And, and that's he, a good point. And he keeps his card for the top 125 because he, he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103. So he made a 10 spot jump. So he's got, you know, 17 or let's see, uh, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20, not a 20. Bad the Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. The only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on SportsGrid. New to the Live Golf Plus app. Watch Live Golf any way you want it. Follow any group. Replay any shot. Anytime, anywhere. Any questions? Watch Live Golf live and on demand. Well, we're going to need that sounder now, Browner, because there has been a trade in the NFL, and it may not be as big as people think, but here locally, because we are Kaplan and Crew, Southern California Sports Talk. It's a very big deal. Hit it, Browner. Breaking news. The Los Angeles Rams have traded 
their defensive captain and their leader of their defense. He calls the plays. Ernest Jones the fourth has been traded to the Tennessee Titans after the Rams and, and Jones failed to reach a contract extension. Here's what's crazy, Browner. He's 24. He was a third-round pick. Last year, 145 tackles for the L.A. Rams. So they lose Aaron Donald, and now they're losing their middle linebacker that calls plays a week before the season because they couldn't come to, cut to terms for a new contract extension. That is, That seems a bit wild to me that the Rams would do this right now. I suspect there may be a little something else going on here. This is this this seems well he odd. he the Rams granted him permission to seek a trade and his agents found a trade, so now he has been traded. So I guess all offseason he made it known I want a contract extension. I've got three hundred plus tackles in my three years as a pro. I got hundred and fifty last year, four sacks. I'm a captain. I call plays. I got the sticker on the back of my head. Give me my money. And the Rams say, go have it elsewhere. Are they becoming a team that you don't do that to unless you are like the guy? Like Matt Stafford has done that to them. They had to pay him. Aaron Donald forcibly said, hey, pay me. Right. David Ramsey said, pay me. They said, bye. Bye. Cooper got paid. Again, he said, uh, uh, wide receiver single season records for them. Right. Like the, he, so, like, he, he gave him no choice. But I mean, Ernest right. Jones. Had the fourth most tackles in the NFC last year. He's your middle linebacker that calls plays, and you're trading him a week before the season. But if you're Ernest Jones, was and you've been productive in this system, is it then smart to then push, to then you know, demand something right. that you know is does did this really play out in his best interest? Because I guess I, I guess if he gets paid, yes, right. That's all he cares. That's about what most players care about at this point. He already won a Super would, Bowl. Because where was he traded to again? The Titans. Okay, so now this is getting worse. <laughs> so now you went from a potential contender to a legit non-contending rebuilding team with no quarterback and no identity because you are you now are operating with a brand new head coach. I don't – you have – this has to be about money. It's all this about money. It has to only be about, about money. money. Yes. There's no there's no way Tennessee is a better football option for him rather than lost than the Rams. So I you know, yes. be careful Belter. what you wish for, man. I mean, I don't know how it works for the Rams either. When you lose that kind of production, you use that leader, you know, like that's that's a big loss. So in this close to the season, that's kind of a weird one. But we'll see what happens there. Browner, now it's time to talk about our prize picks like we do every time during this portion of the show. Prize picks. We use uh we honestly scan the QR code because right now you will get fifty dollars instantly when you make a five dollar play. It's that simple. Make a five dollar play, you get fifty dollars instantly, whether you win or lose on prize picks. It's very, very get fifty dollars instantly when you play your first five dollar lineup. Does that make sense? If you have to do so, sense. scan that QR code. And it will take you directly to the sign-up page to get you started. Uh, Scott has done us a favor today. Scott has done the work for us today. Oh. Scott said, here's my card. Show it and play it straight up. <laughs> so here's Scott's card. Here's Scott's prize picks today. Six picks to win $200. And wouldn't you know, it's filled with Dodgers and Padres. The guy does his homework. The guy does his homework. Here are his picks. I, Go ahead, Brian. He's consistent. And this is the he thing is. that I said about baseball and prize picks. If you're going to do it, pick the same people over and over and over. And he has held true to this, and I respect him for it. Because you can kind of judge by the year guys having whether they can come out on a positive end for you for prize picks. Just right. keep picking Aaron Judge for a home run, though. I don't, I don't understand that. So here is your uh, Scott Kaplan price picks card. We'll go quick through it. Shohei Otani, more than one and a half hits, runs, RBIs. Mookie Betts, more than half a hit. Manny Machado, more than half a hit. Jerickson Profar, more than half a total base. Aaron Judge, more than half a home run. And he put Justin Steele in there, but I think he messed up because today that's a Taco Tuesday special, Browner. Right. He went too soon on Justin Steele. He went too soon because he got six. But if you do it right now, the Justin Steele Taco Tuesday special 
is uh, four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half for Justin Steele. So go take it. I got it. Right. It's everybody can get it right now. On my on my card, I got Justin Steele four and a half strikeouts. Gary Cole more than six strikeouts. Dylan Cease more than six strikeouts. Samaniah less than 16 and a half pitching outs. Uh, and- Asia Wilson. What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. Which you can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place yeah, in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot and they are playing for a place in the £25,000 Champions Week. 97. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What are they? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. should take out the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. shot on the fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. What a moment that is from Adam Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, and delivers Adam Paxton on debut. The boy, the fanboy, comes to the Super Series and wins. All right, everybody, welcome back to Kaplan and Crew. Alex Padilla and John Brown are with you guys here on a Tuesday. We are brought to you by Mountain Trust Realty. If you are in California, specifically in Southern California, Kaplan and Crew, Southern California Sports Talk, there's only one guy to call if you're looking to buy a home or sell your home, and that's Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. Gary's, Gary Cooper has been part of the show longer than I have, so he is very trustworthy. I bought my house with Gary Cooper and Mountain Trust Realty. You can buy yours or help. He can help you sell your house, whatever it is that you need. 858-376-1299. Browner today in Finland, uh, Team US flag football beat Brazil 52 to six. What are you doing? And then in game two, in game two, Team US beat Spain 57-25. Daryl Doucette throwing up numbers, throwing up 50 burgers out there. Listen, man. Listen, stop playing countries that don't play. Here's, okay, here's what I want from Daryl. It's the Doucette. World Cup, bro. All right, okay. Let me listen, listen. This is what I want from Daryl. Did, did you? The U.S. played South Sudan, and you're gonna be over here yelling about Brazil and Spain? Come on now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, this is what I want from, because it, the South Sudan. You're, these are the best basketball players the world has to offer playing basketball against each other. Okay, so first and foremost, second, Daryl Dusset. Here's the deal, bro. Get your squad together. And somebody call The Rock mm-hmm. and get the people from the XFL or whatever he's calling it, the UFL. I think it's the UFL now. Get their best players. And yeah. Daryl said, see if you can beat them. See if you can beat those dudes at flag football. Because this does, this does nothing for me. And I'm Captain America, okay, on this show. I'm Captain no, America. No, no, no. You were, rooting, does, you were rooting against Noah Lyles. Now you're rooting against Daryl Doucette. He earned it. You're rooting against Daryl Doucette. He earned it. I root against people who earned it. You were rooting against Simone Biles. She earned it. You're anti-American. You're anti-American. No, 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 no. no. First of all. No, how about this? How about this? You're selective American. 
you're not Captain America. Captain America roots for all America. All of you, if you put that flag on, if you put those colors on, you root for him. Browner is not that person. False. Captain America does what's right. And that's the hard thing sometimes. And sometimes the hard thing is to tell your fellow American, hey, Simone Biles, suck it up. The world's watching. We don't have time for this. We'll talk about it in the car. Okay? We'll talk about it on the way home. But right now, you got to go out there and get the job done. Hey, no allowed. Hey, no allowed. We got to get the job done, brother. Don't be out here falling all out. You lose. You lose. Get up with respect. Get up with pride. Stand on your feet the way you started this race and go on in the back and cry. Yeah. Okay, cry, cry when nobody's looking like a real man. All but right. criticizing and rooting against are very two different things. And you were rooting against those people. You're rooting against Daryl Doucette. You're rooting against Noah Lyles. And you're rooting against Simone Biles. Were you not? Let me tell you something right now. Let me tell I'm you something right now. Uh, I, listen, the, the gauntlet has been thrown down on Daryl Doucette. I'm rooting against him forever. Okay? The, yeah. the level of ignorance that this man has displayed against some of the greatest players to ever play football has just it's insulting okay it's insulting all right just letting you know you're not captain america you're selective america no 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 i, I already america. told you man captain america does what's right and sometimes that's the hard thing to do a that's quick, why I'm captain america. a quick update on our poll on the youtube chat do you want to tease back 19 percent of you are insane saying no 81% of you, you're normal people. Those 19% of people, they're data-driven. What you got against that, <laughs> nerd? They're data-driven. They're looking at the you're numbers. You're data-driven. You're a nerd. What are you talking about? Do you, how That's did not... you answer the question? What? How did you answer the question? My vote will remain unanimous, okay? Come on. This is America. This isn't, this, is America. this isn't a presidential election. How'd you vote? I mean, I voted yes. Okay, that's what I thought. 82% I voted yes. now. Because I believe his addition to the roster just gives them more options if they if they put people in the right place, okay? Yeah. They swap mm -hmm. out some people and put some people uh, higher up in the order. Now we talking. But if we bring them in and, and, and now we start tinkering with the order and now the lineup is different every day, I got a problem with that. But that's on Mike Schilt, who, by the way, I wasn't sure about Mike Schilt. Just like you weren't sure about Jackson Merrill and, and, and Jerks of Profar, I absolutely was not sure about Mike Schilt. I think Mike Schilt has done the best job that you could have possibly done coming into this situation and dealing with what he's been had to deal with. So my hat goes off to Mike Schilt. My suspicions about you were, 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 you know, not, not founded. Yeah. And you, and you've passed the test, brother. You've passed the test. Now let's see what the postseason calls. I don't want to toot my own horn, but toot, toot, because I was very wrong about Jerickson Profar and Jackson Merrill, but I was very right about Mike Schilt. You were. I mean, if you're going to let A.J. Preller run this team, let him run this team. Yeah. Let him pick his manager. Let him pick his players. Let him do his. He's the president of baseball ops. Let him be a president. Let him Jerry Jones this thing. So now my question. No, don't say that. No, 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 no. I know that's a bad. That was a terrible, terrible announcement. So now let me ask you this question. Question. Are you off his back now? Hmm. I mean, he's not going anywhere now, so he proved me wrong. I mean, unless there's an incredible 2010-type collapse here, they're going to make the postseason. So, I mean, I, I can't say anything else. He made the postseason, right? Like, I, I don't think this season is championship or bust. I don't think Correct. we're the Dodge. I don't think we have the Dodgers mentality, we being the Padres. I think that the goal was to get back in the postseason and see what happens. Now, will we be happy if they're a wild card team and lose to the Diamondbacks in the wild card? No. But did AJ Preller do his job by getting them back in the postseason? Yes. Will I be off him? I don't think I have a choice but to be if they make the postseason. Right? Like, I don't, I, that was the condition. Within this season, and this is why I think that he's done a phenomenal job within this season. One, I like the roster when the season started and some rough patches. They figured things out. They got rolling. But within this, but, but within this individual season, he's brought up someone who who should be rookie of the year. Yeah. He found a, he found jerks in Profar at a, a decent rate with this team's payroll, who has had a career year. He's found somebody to not replace Tatis, but be effective in Tatis's absence, which has been huge. Our catcher position, which has been a disaster, 
for a long time seems to be settled. He's made the proper trades to in, to to increase the bullpen, and he's been able to have the starters here and there throughout the organization survive yeah. to the point where now we may be looking at a fully healthy starting rotation. Right, and I don't know if you said this. Sorry if you did, but doing all that while still trimming the roster salary. Oh, and and thank thank you, uh, DJ Axel. Bringing in Luis Arise. Super early, too. Super early. So, be, before the before people, he got there first. He, when they right. opened the store, when they opened the store, okay, he was first in line. Okay. Yeah. He, he, so like, he that lady outside the Ikea parking lot waiting for them to open. I think we got to get rid of the, obviously, the Rockstar GM is long gone. That, that nickname is long gone for AJ Preller. AJ Preller is a mad scientist. He's a tinkerer. This guy is. This guy is never happy with his roster. He's got to he's got to move pieces, he's got to trade pieces, he's got to get pieces whether they work or not. This is what he does. To to if and remember like that list I made during trade deadline of all the dudes he shipped out yeah. and like the handful of dudes he brought in. So far, it's working. And like I said, if he unless there's a massive collapse cuz currently they have a 6 game lead in the wild card over the the team that's out of it. Yeah, I mean he did his job. Congratulations. That's all I was saying. That's all I was let the man cook. All right. Let the man cook. And he went in. The chef went in there and came out with some salt yeah. based out. And I'm also man. I'm also not like trying to get weird about it. Oh boy. Might be someone up there pressing some buttons, helping us out. Angels in the outfield style. That's all I'm saying. Might have a little extra help. We'll take it. Where's the analytics on that, Brown? Huh? I, I don't think there's what's Peter Seidler's WRC plus up there. <laughs> I don't. I don't think there's uh, any analytics on uh, uh, paranormal activity around the time. <laughs> it can't be quantified. You tell me no. it can't be quantified. It can't be like you can't see a number. I'm just telling you. You, you can't measure that. You can't. But measure maybe. That. But maybe. 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 Seidler I mean, in the outfield. I know this. Can't say no for sure. That's true. All right. Highlight of the day coming right back. Uh, this is Cal. He's blocked well and tries to cut through the middle. Oh! Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah. Trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports screen. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsCrit. sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Five video just came into my life. This is Kaplan and crew with uh, Grande and the Brown Man. Uh, Who sent it Tuesday. to you? What's that? Who sent it? Did you see? I saw it yesterday. Totally forgot about it. Now it's getting resent to me on my fantasy football chat. 
the uh, the Broncos fan that got beat up without dropping his beer this weekend. Oh yeah, I saw that guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, you listen, getting beat up, don't not do that. Drop, not dropping your beer, positive points. Getting beat up by two Edgars, negative points. You can't let that happen, bro. That dude was wearing a shower cap. Like you can't, you can't let that happen, man. You got beat up by a, a big worm, Mex like. A little Mexican kid beat you up like that. Come on, dude. Took him down, bro. Why? If you're in an argument with somebody, and again, people, if you don't intend to fight, say your piece and let it go. Don't, well, don't fake at the guy. Yeah. Don't pump fake the guy. Like you're right. gonna hit him. No, right. this guy clearly wants to fight you. You right. didn't. I mean, yes, you didn't drop your beer, but that's your fault. That's your. But fault. it's also, if I look at this correctly, like. I think it was just a Coors Light. You could have dropped that one. You know, you could have protected yourself and let a Coors Light go. No disrespect to Coors Light whatsoever, but That's the mountains, the the mountains weren't very blue anymore. The beer was probably warm. The beer tells you on the can how cold. I'm looking at it right now. The mountains were not blue. You could have let it go and defended yourself. Like if the mountains were blue, go for it. Protect right. that. Thing. Hold on to it. If it, the mountains are white, dude, the beer's warm. You're taking too long to drink it. You're fake pump. You're you're pump faking a fight, and then you get beat up over it. Come on. If the mount, if the mountain is white, go ahead and fight. That's it. Oh, you're so smart, dude. There you go. Why are you go. this job? Why don't you go be a marketer? Like, I, why I don't, don't know. I like this job better. If the mountain is white, go ahead and fight. I don't think Coors will take it, but that's a great one. I mean, look, I'm just, uh, I'm just here yeah. throwing out ideas. Yeah. Well, I don't know how these ideas are not leading to our highlight of the day because they're brilliant. And the highlight of the day is brought to you by Tory Holistics, where the promo code is Kaplan. Uh, and you, what happens is you spend $75 minimum and you get 20% off your purchase. Tory Holistics, California Holistics, Oxnard Holistics, Mammoth Holistics, all online. And right now, they just tagged us on Instagram, so it reminded me. It is the peanut butter drive at Tory Holistics. If you are in Southern California, if you bring in a 16-ounce plastic jar of peanut butter, you will get a pre-roll for a penny. So what is a 16 ounce jar of peanut butter cost? Like $6 nowadays? Something around there. So you bring that in and you get a pre-roll for a penny and you do something good for the kids. Um, peanut butter drive supporting Got Your Back San Diego at Tory Holistics. They just tagged us in a post too. If you want more information, you can go to our Instagram at Kaplan and Crew to learn more as well. But this highlight of the day, um, I, I guess I'm not surprised, Browner, but I am surprised that this hasn't happened to us. And I love the Sports Grid family. And I love being on Sirius XM. But what I would love more is for somebody to give me $100 million to do this podcast for the next three years, the way oh. Amazon oh. did to the Kelseys. The New oh, Heights podcast man. with Jason and Travis Kelsey was just signed by Amazon's Wondery um, for $100 million for the next three years to basically control distribution, ads, all that stuff. A hundred million dollars. Shout out Taylor Swift because that ain't happening without you. So, I'm damn. Gonna, I'm going to say this one time and one time only. Slander, if you work in that, de if you work in that department in Amazon, please have your resume ready because some of y'all gonna get fired because you can't pay somebody this type of money. Even Amazon, you can't give these dudes a hundred million dollars for what four years or three years? Four three years, years, right? You can't give these guys $33 million a year to do a podcast and then not have it come back to you when they don't return that investment. So this, this podcast has to make $33 million in ads. Did you like, know? Uh, did you see the other one? Call Her Daddy, that podcast that was originated on Barstool. You know how much yes. she got? $100 million. $125 million from Sirius XM. Serious. Holla what are we doing we wrong, already, bro? We already here, Sirius. We Kaplan already here. Crew, Southern California Sports Talk, now worth $100 million. What does Sirius say? How do we do it? Sirius, Sirius <laughs> trying to get me to do my home lock for some strange reason. I don't know. Girl, stop listening to my conversations. Uh, look, again, at some point, this idea that you can get... The people who gave Joe Rogan all that money are learning this lesson. If you overpay for these things, which you never have to, you're going to have to fire people because a podcast can't make $33 million. Who's to say? That's a great question. <laughs> and ad revenue. 
can you make up $33 million on a podcast? Joe Rogan just got, in February, signed another $250 million contract. Clearly, the money's out there. For him, if call... But that's the thing, too. Daddy, if the, if the call her daddy girl, for whatever that's worth, okay, whatever, how many years it's worth, per year, if she has enough power in, in her industry to generate that money in revenue per year, then yeah, go ahead, get it. If I'm a company, I'm going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. But if I just don't think that Travis Kelsey podcast has enough entertainment value to generate $33 million in ad dollars. I just, I don't see that. I don't yeah. see it. Uh, not coming on the show, bro. But her fans do listen to that show. That show blew up as soon as he started dating. That's why I said thank Taylor Swift, because my question to Amazon is, who, by the way, have plenty of money to accidentally throw $100 million away. Not that big a True. deal for them. True. So, but my question is, if Travis Kelsey breaks up with Taylor Swift, does that podcast still stand as a top three podcast on all the charts? No. Absolutely not. And, and by the way, when yeah. they keep going to the podcast, and there no, he never talks about her, and she never comes up. Those viewers, they're gonna go away. Mm -hmm. They're gonna go well, away. That's and the Anthony thing too. Avila, you're correct. Thirty three million is only to break even. Um, also, I'm just reading this as well. Uh, Wondery also signed Dax Dax Shepard's Armchair Expert podcast to eighty million dollars in July. I never heard of that, so I can't comment on that. I don't necessarily I have. know what that he podcast just, it's is. It's like about. every other podcast out there that interviews celebrities. But oh. he does it from his attic in LA. See, but that's, again, you're interviewing. I think that is more sustainable because you're interviewing interesting people in an interesting time where there's a movie coming out or an album coming out or something's viral. So that you can sustain getting those ad dollars back. What about a football podcast is going to generate $33 million in ads a year? Well, we're about to find out because they already signed it. When we come back, let's wrap this thing up. This is Kaplan and crew. What has happened? What has transpired here at the First Bank Center here in Denver, Colorado? It wasn't just a big night of fights. It was a big night of memorable moments. Incredible setup here, incredible matchmaking, incredible storytelling. Oh, you had to come here. All these fighters that step in here are warriors, and all have my respect. And I'm into this game, yeah. We'll be into this, yeah. And we are live here in the Maverick Center here in Salt Lake City, Utah, folks. What a night it is going to be historic indeed for BKFC 56. Whoever's the king of violence right here, this is going to be a great fight. Today, Conor McGregor, myself, and McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Fair Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, we did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. All right, everybody, welcome back to Kaplan and Crew. We are brought to you by Life Brew, where you use the promo code GREATFRIENDS to get 30% off your purchase at lifebrew.com, and that's with a Y, L-Y-F-E, brew.com. Uh, if you watched yesterday's show, Brett made a surprise appearance at Scott's house. Also got uh, 
Browner, we actually sent a whole package over to Eric Williams yesterday. I got Eric's address and that was shipped over to him. He should got it today. I should text him to see if he actually uh, got it. But uh, yes, we're brought to you by Life Brew. I don't have a bag in front of me, but I'll say this. My mother is a very particular person with what she eats and drinks. She loves this stuff. And by the way, she's recommended it to all her coworkers. So now all of a sudden, they got all these Oxnard kindergarten preschool teachers running around drinking mushroom life coffee or life brew coffee so shout out to my mom representing out in oxnard and shout out to life brew you use a promo code great friends you get 30 percent off your order uh plenty of other things at mushroom life as well so go check it out life brew l-y-f-e brew.com browner a very good point by dj axel who's by the way second shout out for him today uh it don't have to or this is actually michael collins it don't have to be entertaining it just has to bring in money the- all right. Now, how do you think yeah. you're going to bring in that money? Anyways, I don't know. I th- I just think that that podcast did crazy numbers last year, specifically once he, uh, Travis started dating Taylor. Uh, they interview athletes, they interview whatever, whether you like it or not. That's, you know, I don't know. I but don't, again, I'm it not, does numbers. It does big numbers. It's a good podcast. I'm not saying it's a bad podcast. I'm saying if that podcast generates $33 million in revenue from ads, I, show me a place, show me a podcast that's done that before. Yeah. They didn't know. even well, do that last year. Well, Joe Rogan, call her daddy. Call her daddy did not make $33 million in ads, brother. Then how'd she get a $125 million deal? Because she has a lot of subscribers. She has a lot. Of, she has, How her, do you know this? You know this, or are you just because doing the counter thing? Were you just saying things now? No, this <laughs> call her daddy in particular. If you notice, I didn't, I didn't go out to this Joe Rogan thing because I don't listen to Joe Rogan, so I don't know that. But the call her daddy thing, I watched the dude to uh, from Barstool talk about why they didn't get involved in this. Yeah, and well, this is why I know. It. This this is why I know. This is why I can speak to this because I've watched the people who were supposed to cut a check for them go. Now nah, I'm good. I'll pass. We'll pass on that because they know they can't get that revenue back. Right. Barstool, if they gave her one hundred and twenty-five million dollars, or they gave that podcast one hundred and twenty-five million dollars, how are we going to at least break even on that podcast over time? They and they thought that it was a bad bet, so they didn't do it. So they allowed somebody else to do it. That's yeah. business. You go where you can. You work with somebody will give you. This is what New Heights or whatever it's called is worth. That's what Joe Rogan is worth on the open market. And that's what Call Her Daddy's worth on the open market. Will it be proven to be worth the purchase? We will see. Keep the receipts. One final, uh, by the way, Amazon has a lot more money to spend than Barstool. So. Oh, it leaps and bounds. It's not even close. Uh, final update. Do you want Fernando Tatis back on the Padres? 85% of you say yes. 15% of you are crazy. That is the final tally i'll hit and pull there so there you go y'all crazy man shout out to everybody that was here today we saw y'all we see you all all the time uh dj axel hector padilla rick borba was here maria anthony tommy tommy andre prado michael collins david p um mike or am i saying his name wrong not michael collins michael sedios shout out to all you guys that uh tuned in today tony reyes appreciate you all uh, when Scott's not here to stick around and hang out with us knuckleheads, we try and do our thing. Uh, there's a lot less poop talk when Scott's not here, but we can, <laughs> well, we can change that if you guys want, because yeah. By, by the way, look, it's getting better. Oh, it's getting better. Still looks gross. It still looks getting better. It's getting better. Oh, uh, it yeah. looks like your spider web, your web slinger exploded in your hand. <laughs> I know. It's I burnt a malfunction. I burnt myself last week, and I uh, oh, decided not to show. Worse. Yeah, I decided not to show you guys because it was disgusting. But um, oh. it's gotten a lot better. Played softball on it yesterday. Got some dirt on it. No infection yet. It's been covered, yeah. but now I'm peeling. It's like a sunburn now. You know how like oh. your skin peels? Yeah. Yeah, that's how it is now. Uh, feels a little weird, but anyways, uh, that's disgusting. We are back tomorrow, everybody. This guy's uh, out here operating with an open wound. It's not a softball. It's dry. It's totally dry. It's just peeling. Oh. Played softball with an open wound. Look at that. I'm a badass, dude. I'm a badass. I don't hit no. I don't hit the. Look, I'm peeling it right now. Uh, I, I don't hit the IR for for anything. Uh, Iron well, Man over here. Slow down. I just take slow vacations. 
There you go. There we go. Shoot, Iron Man. shoot. I even vacationed with COVID. How about that? But I mean, you got it while you were there. Still, that's didn't different. Stop. Didn't stop me. It's totally different. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Uh, this is Grande, Alex Padilla, at Alex Padilla 86, and Browner, at Browner's Podcast. Do us a favor. Follow us on Instagram, at Kaplan and Crew. We're trying to grow that thing. Yeah. It's actually doing, it's actually doing really well, growing pretty much pretty quickly. Follow us over there, at Kaplan and Crew, on all the platforms down below.